Hi everyone, my name is Tepiso Grace Mufugeng. Um, I come from the Val. I was born in the Val. I live in the Val. I'm a sister to four siblings. Um, the other three are my half brothers and one sister. Um, I am a labor law graduate. I am a gospel artist, singer, songwriter. Um, that is basically it about me. Um, I grew up um, in a very comfortable childhood. Um, I, I had my parents around um, with my sister. Um, as the years went by, I guess my parents had had a bit of a, a, a turf. Um, they started arguing a lot. They started fighting a lot. And growing up, I had like low self-esteem and I wasn't this this person that would be around people. I always wanted to be alone. I never had friends in school. I think I had one, one friend all my life. Um, so yeah, while I was in high school, grade eight, my parents uh, fought a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And at the time, my sister was was still little. So, being the first child um, to witness like people you love go through go through that wasn't wasn't nice. Um, I started having these like dark emotions. I started um, questioning God. Why was I born to witness such things? Like why, why am I here on earth? Um, I started having sort of like suicidal thoughts. I cried all the time, but at the time I did not know what was wrong with me. So um, one day, um, I think it was around 2 p.m. I woke up I was going to the bathroom. On my way to the bathroom, I realized that my parents' room was open. Um, sorry, guys. I found I found my dad um, packing his suitcase with, you know, with the hangers inside. He did not even take the clothes out of the hanger and. He packed and he left, and I do not know why did he leave at 2 a.m. And in the morning, my mom found out that um, there's no clothes in the wardrobe. There's um, there's nothing. He took everything and left, and we did not know where he was. Um, so. It really hit me hard because, um, like, seeing your parent cry every day is not nice. At the same time, you know, I love them both. I cannot take a side that who's wrong, who's right. Um, but but witnessing that was was very hard, and I tried my best to protect my little sister and so that she couldn't see what was really going on. Um, although she asked a lot of questions, she did not really understand. So um, in 2015, my little sister got terribly sick. Um, I remember um, it was my 21st uh, birthday party on a Saturday. And then Saturday midnight, she just got sick all of a sudden. And she had to be rushed to hospital and then I see you just like that and then the doctor told us no she has kidney stones and one of her kidneys is very damaged um, they had to operate her immediately so I remember um, walking in the ICU room and see my sister plugged into so many machines she was so pale she was blue uh, she couldn't even recognize who I was so I gradually, I gradually started feeling like it's like you're in a very dark, dark place and no one can help you. 
so I started getting more depressed. Um, my mother saw that I, I'm always emotional. I'm, I do not want to be around people. I, I just don't want to be around anyone. So I dropped out of school that year because waking up was a mission. I couldn't even get out of bed. So I dropped out and I told my parents that I can't, um, I can't continue with, with school. Um, I need a break. And then they said, fine. So, but uh, my sister got well. But after, after a very, very, very long time, um, in that same year, uh, I changed a psychologist. I went to a different one. So when I got to this, this, this different one, I think she was, she was more practical and more real. And she helped me, uh, you know, sort of like navigate my feelings. Like you feeling, this means that if you feel like this, this is what is happening to you. So since from 2015, I've been seeing uh, my psychologist, Dr. Matilda, till now. Um, she is she's the one that actually uh so like shed light on what was really really wrong with me um so after 2015 i went back to school 2016 i finished my studies so in 2018 i i, I did my um first show my first one man show um, it was a success. It was a success, I must say. Um, what went wrong is that I was working with disloyal people, and post the show, after the show, and everything, um, I realized that I actually lost a lot of money. Um, it took me back to feeling to feeling depressed because like how could like someone you trust with with your brand with your talent steal from you and that money did not come easy i i had to work hard for it and just to find out that you know some people really don't care as long as they benefit from you they fine I got severely depressed to a point where I stopped singing. I stopped writing songs. I stopped completely. I stopped everything until it happened for an entire month. Um, I remember that I used to, I, I had to be at work at seven. So I would get to work at 6.30 and then around eight, Every day, Monday to Friday, I would go to the bathroom and just cry myself. My eyes out, I would just cry and cry and cry. And in my mind, I was like, what's wrong with you? I mean, you've got a job that is paying well. Like, who doesn't want to work for this company and, and, and you got a job? But I still did not see the light in all of that, so. Every day when I got to work, I would cry and cry and cry. So what I did, I, I used to wear glasses. And maybe in my mind, I thought that people would not recognize that um, I've been crying. Sunday morning, as I was packing to go back to work, it started again. You know, these these emotions don't, don't come because you've been thinking and thinking sometimes you just wake up and you cry for no reason at all you just feel like you know what i'm better off dead than alive so it started again and i was with my little sister so i these emotions came i thought you know what let me just go make tea or something but as I, missed, as I was making tea, still I was crying until my sister said, Be how sharp. Because my mother was at work. 
and then we called he she called and like I couldn't stop crying she called my dad my dad rushed me to the hospital so when I got to the hospital my mother was already at the hospital was already home so she came to the hospital um, when I got got into the casualty ward the doctor asked me what's wrong I couldn't even answer the doctor um, my mother got in the ward and she saw me and she cried I've never seen her cry like that in my entire life so like these two nurses came in and told me see mama hush up what's going on talk to us King what's Allah I'm like I don't know I'm just not okay and they admitted me for anxiety and then um, the entire time when I was in hospital I was sedated so I couldn't feel anything I just woke up to eat and to be sedated again and then I got discharged so um, a week later after I got discharged uh, my sister-in-law passed away um, I remember the day I was home with my fiance and then we got a call that no and like no and at the time I'm still on heavy medication because the doctor told me that as soon as I was as soon as I was discharged the doctor told me that I should try by all means to stay indoors so that the medication can work. She was stabbed multiple times and she was with her son and her son had to witness his mother being killed like that. Uh, so when we got there, I saw like about four or five police vans and a lot of people outside. But uh, I did not understand what's going on. So I, I went closer and closer to the to way the whole thing happened as I was approaching. Um, just so out of blood. It wasn't nice. Uh, the way she 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 was stabbed. Like, no one was allowed to see her. After that we went home and we did the funeral arrangements and we laid her to rest. Um, I went back to my psychologist. This time she referred me to a psychiatrist. Um, when I got to the psychiatrist, he evaluated me and to find out that I have MDD, which is a major depression disorder and mood disorder. Some people call it bipolar. Um, it's mood disorder. He then um, put me on medication um, to try to stabilize my mood. And um, what he suggested is that I try to exercise a lot and I I, I try to, 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 to keep on going on with um, counseling. Okay. Uh, how my fiancé is dealing with this is that um, he supports me by just being there. You know, sometimes you don't need a person to really talk to you, give you advice. Just being there and being silent for me is enough. You know, when I'm all moody and stuff it just gives me space when i'm okay we talk about it so um i think i got my depression um genetically from my mother since she's also um uh, depressed and taking medication just like me and the traumas that i've experienced in my life just triggered it more and made it more severe so depression doesn't just come from experiences it can be genetically it can't be it can be um, chemical imbalancing in your body um, and events that happen in your life okay hi my name is Sebi and I have been through it the most